Okay guys, you asked for this video and here is gaming on the Galaxy Z Flip 3. So the Z Flip 3 is a device that is different from the Z Fold 3. Well, this flips open like your traditional clamshell. And that brings some very unique things uh, with the Flip 3. Now, the first thing is of course that cover display. It isn't used for gaming in any form or fashion. It's just used for showcasing, of course great wallpapers or using it for other things. But of course, this is in a clamshell here and I've got this lovely case from Samsung. I'll leave the links for you, for you guys down below. This opens up into a 6.7 inch device. So the display size is a little bit narrower and longer. And of course, you've got stereo speakers, uh, but also gives you a slightly different scenario, right? You've got a battery size that's smaller at 3,300 milliamps, uh, but you still have that 120 hertz display. So we're gonna see how that affects battery life with this device. Now, when it comes to gaming, you still, still expect some very high-end performance, right? We've got the Snapdragon 888, we've got eight gigs of RAM, uh, you've, we've got UFS 3.1 storage. So all the things you need for that full gaming experience, but how does it differ and what do you get with this? So we went ahead and played some of our favorite games like we like to do on this channel. And we started off with Call of Duty Mobile. Now, Call of Duty Mobile plays exactly as you would expect uh, using, of course, our game, uh, game Bench Pro. You can see the stats are 60 frames per second. And of course, it's running at its highest settings and it ran really well, but it also looks really good on this device. I will say though, the narrow feel makes it feel a little bit more comfortable to just navigate and it feels, it's not necessarily a 21 by nine aspect ratio. It just feels like that to me anyway. Uh, but again, gaming on this with Call of Duty Mobile was almost flawless. Uh, the one thing you notice that Call of Duty Mobile does use uh, a higher amount of RAM in comparison to other games that you're gonna see. So now the next stop was of course PUBG Mobile, which we like to do in this order. And the very first setting was Ultra HD Ultra. Now in that setting, you usually get 40 frames per second and that was the case here again. Uh, and you can see that it also ran really well. It was really smooth, but it ran a very steady 40 frames. The uh, RAM usage was much lower uh, than what you had with uh, Call of Duty Mobile, but again, very solid performance. And again, the 120 Hertz display was really smooth and things just ran really well. Now you guys know very well with, of course, PUBG Mobile, we have to play it also on Smooth Extreme. And that is of course where you get 60 frames per second on this device. And performance again was really good. I have to say though, um, it felt really nice and fluid and the display also felt really solid. So it didn't feel soft. It felt, you know, like a standard display. And when it comes to that crease in the middle, it's, it's the fun thing that you could try is if you tilt or you bend the phone a little bit, uh, that basically allows you to put your cursor or your line of sight in the middle. So if you need help with shooters, that should definitely help you. But the overall experience was good. The game performance also, again, solid 60 frames per second, less use of RAM on there, uh, and overall just really good performance. Now, when we moved over to um, Genshin Impact. Now, Genshin is one where over time I, I saw stats that I, I liked and I didn't like. So within the very first uh, 10 minutes of gameplay, while of course running at higher settings for 60 frames per second, uh, I was able to get uh, about 51 to 55 frames per second. Ran really well and solid there. By the time I progressed and played the game much longer, it dropped down to 30 frames per second and even some, sometimes lower. Now. Again, that's something that may change if uh, there's an update to it, but I would just say performance from what I've seen just right there was much lower than I expected for a longer period of time playing Genshin Impact. Yes, the game did look smooth, but I expected it to be around the 50, maybe uh, high 40 range in terms of performance, not in the 30s or even in the 20s. So that is something to take note. If you're gonna use some, playing something graphically intensive, maybe it needs more RAM. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I think the, uh, the game might need an update for this specific device. So just put that with a grain of salt. Now. The other thing, of course, is game streaming services, right? You've got things like Stadia, you've got Xbox Game Pass, and this is where the Flip 
has a better uh, outcome than say the Galaxy uh, Z Fold 3. Now, granted the Z Fold 3, when we did that video, it ran everything really well. Like it had no issues and it played also the game streaming uh, service as well. But when it comes to using game streaming services on your mobile device, we've seen that controllers like the Kishi or the Backbone, even for iOS devices, uh, are clutch because you don't have to carry, say, an Xbox controller with you. You can take something that's more compact, throw in your backpack, and that's it. So, of course, the device opens up and you can plug it into a Kishi and you're good to go. So I like that aspect about it. It makes it easier for me to go ahead and uh, you know game with my Z Flip and performance is just really good. Now, you know, whether you're playing on Xbox Game Pass, playing Ascent, Ascent ran at 60 frames per second, uh, really smooth gameplay experience. Uh, and also again, this is streaming, but you can see at least it's streaming at a very high rate. Similar also uh, was playing Forza Horizon 4, just seeing how that performed quickly, because that's something you need to jump to. Or even games like NBA 2K21. So you've got that kind of very smooth performance overall. Now, moving over to Stadia. Stadia, uh, you know, jumped in to play Mortal Kombat and that played really well. And again, just having the ability to plug it into the controller to me is really, really cool and important. Now, when it comes to temperatures, uh, this is where I saw some very numbers. Now with every other game I mentioned here, except for the game streaming services and Genshin, uh, I got between 103 to 105. So it ran pretty well, it was pretty cool. Now with Genshin Impact, it ran a little harder and also a little higher. So I got between 107 to 109 degrees, which are higher temperatures. And maybe that's because of course of the compact nature and the way this is designed. It wasn't too bad. I was still able to play us uh, for much longer, but I think it was a solid experience overall. Audio is pretty good. The speakers are loud and clear, but you can take a quick listen yourself and decide right there. So when you look at the Galaxy Z Flip uh, 3, this is a very solid smartphone. Um, it's got that traditional smartphone feel because when you open it up, you have a regular phone and you can close it up into something uh, like this in this clamshell nature. Uh, in terms of the gaming performance, we've seen that it can run all your games very well. Now, I mentioned Genshin Impact earlier because I ran to anomaly for a Snapdragon AAA device where it just really slowed down. So I have to think that that has to do with hopefully some updates because the device is still not available yet on the market. So we'll have to see, but I, in case you're thinking about gaming on this device, I say you are most likely covered and you will have a good experience. But if you guys have any questions or any comments about gaming on the Galaxy Z Flip 3, let me know. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.